the goals for discussing this chapter is to discuss the import the important concepts about the genome about the human genome project and also we'll uh, be able to mention about the importance of the mapping of the human genome our previous knowledge on the DNA is that the DNA okay actually from macroscopic to microscopic you have the cro is contained in the chromosomes okay remember that in biochemistry and for each chromosome it is composed of chromatids and if you unwind them further you see a densely packed inactive heterochromatin and we f as, as we further unwind okay when it's relaxed it's in the form of a euchromatin and it's in the active form and in the euchromatin form we'll be able to appreciate the nucleosome okay the nucleosome is a unit which is composed of the histone where the uh, the dna winds around okay and the dna itself and if we uh, untangle it for further we can appreciate the basic unit of gen genetics which is the dna the central dogma of genetics states that dna can be replicated by itself okay into another dna or it can be also be transcribed into an rna and we know what's the purpose of rna being transcribed okay after all the splicing removing the non-coding non-protein coding parts of the rna this rna is translated into amino acids which form the protein protein in the form of uh, the cytoskeleton protein in the form of the enzymes and other forms of protein okay in our previous knowledge of the dna is that every dna okay is being transcribed and every RNA is being translated into proteins. Actually, that's true. Okay. 1.5% of all the genes, of all the genes, are what we call as the protein coding genes. The total number of genes is 3.2 billion ba base pairs. Okay. So out of those 3.2 billion base, base pairs, you see you have 1.5% which is 20,000 genes are responsible for protein synthesis. And the rest, which is the 98.5% is involved in gene regulation. So it's, it's, it, so that means not all DNA is converted into proteins okay majority of the of uh, the genes are involved in gene regulation so that is those are non-coding DNA the non-coding RNA and epigenetics so let's look back into the previous diagram okay so which parts here are the non-coding? Let's see. The centromere is a non-coding DNA. The centromere, the, the, the part that holds two chromatid strands together. Okay. The telomeres at the end, okay, which are responsible for the aging. And this one, this is an RNA. But then you see the promoter. You see an enhancer these are non-coding RNA you see the histones okay you can also see 
some uh, modifications of the histones. So those are epigenetics. So let's go to non-coding DNA. So we'll be talking about genetic polymorphisms. These are variations in the DNA in the form of a variation in uh, uh, a single nucleotide. Okay, and that is what we call as SNPs. Okay, SNPs can cause a disease, directly cause a disease, or it can uh, be a neutral neutral variant. Uh, that that means uh, it doesn't cause a disease, but by itself, but it can cause a disease if it's paired or if it's in close proximity with another SNP that is causing a disease. Okay. The concept that I uh, just mentioned is what we call a linkage disequilibrium. Kindly read that in the book. The second genetic polymorphisms is polymorphisms in the form of multiple nucleotide polymorphisms or what we call as copy number variations. It is in the form of long stretches of DNA. Other forms of non-coding DNA are promoters, enhancers, silencers, and binding sites in the DNA. He also mentioned about the telomeres and centromeres. Transposons, if you remember your uh, biochem, in the non-coding RNA, okay, we have two forms. We have two uh, forms of non-coding RNA. That is what we call as the microRNA, which is involved in post-transcriptional silencing. Okay? So it is an RNA that is not involved in translation into protein. It remains as an RNA, uh, which is involved in the silencing, into, um, silencing of translation into protein. Okay? Or you can also have a um, synthetically produced microRNA, what we call as the small interfering RNA. Okay, it is used in a knockdown technology. Okay, so for example, in in the lab, we want to have to produce a rat which doesn't have any hair. We use this um, knockdown technology is to remove uh, the the RNA that gets that is uh, uh, translated into protein into the hair protein another form of non-coding RNA is what we call the non long non-coding RNA it's very much similar to micro RNA but the functions are varied okay it can be used to activate a gene to suppress a gene, modify chromatin, and assemble of uh, assemble protein complexes. These non all non-coding RNA are involved in uh, the um, control of different diseases, uh, varying from atherosclerosis to cancer. So this is a figure. Uh, illustrating to us the concept of microRNA. Take note that we have, we see two DNAs here. Okay, this one. Actually, two genes and another one here. So this is a DNA, okay, which gets transcribed, uh, which gets uh, transcribed into an RNA and later it's it wants to get uh, to be translated into a protein the plan is that's the plan okay uh, transcription and translation into protein and another gene here if you take note this is what we call as the micro RNA gene okay which is of course uh, um, the de uh, it's destined to become a micro RNA Okay, we have a primary RNA here. Okay, becomes a uh, pre-RNA, pre-RNA, 
okay and through this dicer or an enzyme called dicer it becomes spliced into what we call as the mature microRNA okay so how does this microRNA become responsible in transcriptional silencing so look this microRNA binds to a complex what we call as the RNA induced silencing complex okay it acts very much like a transcription factor or a um, yeah but uh, or a polymerase but then it's involved in of course silencing okay how does it silence a uh, an rna that is destined to be become a protein to be translated into protein two ways you have okay translational repression where in this risk complex the risk complex by the way okay binds with the uh, micro rna and it blocks translation another thing is that the complex binds into the rna and causes cleavage okay it breaks the rna that is supposed to be translated into protein and the process is what we call as post transcriptional silencing or what we call as gene silencing okay this figure talks about the the uh, functions of the long non-coding rna so it's long because it is composed of not just one um uh, uh, single nucleotide but it's you see you have a lot of nucleotide okay linked together so this uh, long non-coding rna binds to a ribonucleoprotein transcription complex okay remember very much similar to the risk complex here the previous figure okay however in this context this is involved this trans the, of course um this uh complex is involved in transcription in gene activation okay so that means when the gene is activated you see uh translation uh transcription and translation will proceed okay it can also be uh, involved in gene suppression where this long non-coding RNA binds to the said complex, okay, and will not um, proceed to transcription and translation. It can also promote chromatin modification, wherein the binding of the long non-coding RNA and the uh, transcription complex causes changes in the histones causes what we call as uh, modifications of the histones methylation and acetylation we will talk about that later next is that this complex okay becomes an attachment of other transcription factors causing changes in the DNA so we are done with with uh, non-coding DNA and non-coding RNA let's go to epigenetics epigenetics are uh, stuff or our elements that are outside the DNA and we are talking about the histones and the histone modifying factors Okay, or what we call as the chromatin complexes. Histones are protein, okay? Protein that are uh, that are um, where where the DNA winds around, okay, causing a clumped DNA, especially in the inactive form. Okay, histone modifying factors are. Um, are um, 
histone modifying factors are methyl groups or acetyl, acetyl groups or phosphates that bind into that bind with the histone um, modifying its action okay so um, and the following are types of histone modifying factors histone remodeling factors or remodeling complexes wherein it modifies the the conform conformation conformation of the dna next is the uh, writers okay or the marks okay wherein for example if a histone is attached with a methyl group it causes the silencing of that method of that um, histone therefore there will be no transcription there will be no translation that will occur next is the histone acetylation where this acetyl group activates that causes that means it causes some uh, transcription and translation later phosphate group that attaches to the histone either can cause an activation or an inactivation when a DNA the, the methyl group attaches itself to the DNA it causes an irreversible silencing and we when you have chromatin organizing factors as your histone modifying factors it causes the looping of DNA okay thereby regulating spatial relationships between promoters and enhancers we also have read erasers and readers okay and why is epigenetics important epigenetics are important because these are when uh, when they are dysregulated when there is disturbance in the epigenome it causes diseases okay it has a central role in cancer and in other diseases so this is a histone and when you want to count the units you see you have one h1 you have h2 two units of h2 you have h3 and h4 okay and if we total them all you see h1 1 2 3 4 5 so you see uh, 6 7 8 9 so you have 9 units of histones h1 being the linker histones there are two rounds two turns of dna around a histone approximately two so particularly you see you have 1.8 turns the dna um when uh, stretched uh, dna from one cell when stretched can be as long as two meters okay but if it's uh, clumped in a dn in a in a nucleus it can be as small as eight micrometers so this figure illustrates the two types of chromatin heterochromatin which is in the inactive form and the euchromatin which is in the active form the heterochromatin okay um is cannot be translated because it is in the clump form and these are what um maintains it in the clump form these are what we if you if you take note you have lots of methyl groups here in the histone and in the euchromatin you see lots of acetyl groups here the yellow one okay that's why promoting relaxation of the dna so how do we how do we apply the concept of epigenetics into real life okay so remember about the debate about uh, between which uh, 
gives um, more weight in the development of a person you, if you have um, is it the, the the genes or the environment is it nature or or is it um, nurture so this is the answer it's both both genetics and epigenetics play a great role in the development of a person okay so g genetics that means that the dna of a person the environment also plays a big role okay environment or epigenetics so for example uh, the person might have good genes however uh, these genes are being affected by uh, vices by medications and um, traumas um, stress okay it can lead to a deterioration of the DNA this can also explain why twins okay monozygotic twins differ from each other when they grow up because of environmental differences let me just uh, explain to you a little bit about the concept on gene editing okay this based uh, basically on how a certain bacteria um, fights its enemy so in in the book it mentioned about phages or viruses what it does is that it takes the dna of its of the previous enemy or the previous virus that it encounters and it incorporates its the the, the dna of of that enemy into its own in the form of clustered interspersed short palindromic repeats okay so it has uh, the crispr into its own dna okay and it's being transcribed into a guide rna and this guide rna becomes bound into uh, with a protein called a cas9 nuclease and this complex is the one that is responsible in fighting the next um, virus that it encounters so for example this protein okay cleaves the the dna of the virus okay and causes mutation two mutations in the d enemy's dna you have the non-homologous end joining mechanism which is error prone or homologous DNA recombination so class you might wonder uh, how how this concept in gene editing among bacteria uh, becomes applicable in humans so imagine this is the RNA the 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 RNA of a certain cell without disease okay this is a protein where it binds to okay and this is the dna of a cell um uh, dna of a cell a certain segment of which contains the dna that will be coded for cancer or diabetes this portion here undergoes mutation and therefore it doesn't become a diabetic cell or a cell that will be transformed into cancer.